quick tools. Ghost Bright is a short animation that I made for a weekly challenge under the topic Optical Illusion. In the video, the camera rotates around the scene to show an old lady holding a picture frame from behind. When we get to the front, we then see that the frame is actually broken and see-through. Then, the reflection of the groom and ghost bride appears inside the frame, creating the illusion of a mirror while still retaining the see-through effect. Now what's so special is that for this illusion to work, there are no keyframes at all, no node setups, no light paths trickery because it's an EV, no post compositing, and it is completely dynamic. Meaning, the illusion is exactly as you see it in Blender's viewport and it will react dynamically to your camera's view in real time. And I'm going to teach you how you could replicate this illusion in this video. The first and easiest part of this illusion is how to make the frame look opaque on one side but invisible on the other side. So I have this plane that is separate from the frame. Simply go to your object's material settings and enable back color. This will render your object's back faces invisible. Now for the heavy duty part of the illusion. The reflections are created with the mirror modifier which I've used the frame as the mirror object. This will give you an accurate projection of the reflection's distance and angle. Especially when you tilt or rotate the frame, the reflections will react accordingly. As to how I've made the reflections to only appear within the frame, I've used the boolean modifier to cut away parts that are outside the frame. In order for this illusion to work, the boolean cutter's shape has to be set up to always follow the camera's view. As you can see in this viewport, the cutter object is always changing depending on the location of the camera. Let's go to a new scene where I can demonstrate to you how to do this step by step. First, add a cube as your cutter object if your frame has 4 corners. If for whatever reasons your frame has more than 4 corners, then just have the same number of corresponding sides on your cutter. Select the vertices in edit mode and press Ctrl H to hook them to a new object for each and every one of them. Now parent each of the hooks at the back to the corresponding ones in front. Create a set of 4 new empties for the frame's corners like this. Then, duplicate the set and move it to the front hooks like this. Select each of the front hooks and constrain their location to the corresponding empties. Then add a new empty at the center of the set of four empties and parent them to it. This is the master empty that will be very useful later on. Now align the camera with the master empty and parent it to the camera. The front part of the cutter is now attached to your camera's view. So let's deal with the back part where it needs to follow the position of the frame's corners. To do this, select the front hooks and give them a damp track constraint to their corresponding corners so that they always point to them when the camera is moving. Next, we need to make it so that the back hooks are always proportionally distanced at the back end of the mirror. Select the front hooks, right click on the Y scale and select Add Driver. We want to use the camera's Y location to drive this value so that the further away it is from the mirror, the same goes for the back hooks at the opposite side. I'm not very good at math, so to keep it simple, my mirror, which is the center point, is located in my scene where Y is 0. Pick the camera as the object driver and choose Y location for world space. Since the value is negative, we need to multiply it by negative 1 to return a positive value. Then add a plus 10 at the end as a buffer for the minimum depth of the cutter for when the camera is very near to the mirror.
If we go ahead and apply the boolean modifier to our mirrored object by using the cutter, you will see that it is indeed working as intended, but the front part is also cut off. To fix this, I added a cube that covers the front half of my scene and used it as a union boolean operation for my cutter. Also, if your reflections are not cut off right at the edge of your frame, you can scale the master MT to adjust the size of the cone for your cutter object. Now it works! But wait! See what happens when you move the camera around to the back of the mirror. We can still see the mirrored part showing up when the cutter passes through the object. We don't want this to happen, so select the master empty that is parented to your camera and give it a limit location constraint for maximum Y axis at 0 meter. This will prevent the front hooks of the cutter from going behind the mirror object along with your camera. Don't forget to parent the four empties for the corners to your mirror object. Now you can rotate or move your mirror and see the effect in real time too. I hope you enjoyed this video and have learned a thing or two while making this real time mirror effect. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section. Until next time, thank you for watching, save your file, and I'll see you in the next video. Hi! <laughs> Saps.